All right, so this is the scene that we get to immediately Where following the completion of the tutorial. Was, a lone man sits among the room. It's at least a creep. The man. I've all but you. I've seen an enormous creature out there, a golem of stone. The evil energy it emits is beyond anything I've ever felt. I'd say getting rid of that beast would be a good start. All right, we have a new quest to get rid of that beast. Uh, we will want to track the dialogue because it will actually give us some important information uh, about the kinds of things we're going to be going into. However, being one of the quests that starts out every run of the game, I skipped through a little of this, uh, but then instantly felt bad about it. So he uh, turns his mindset towards you. It's not my farm hold, is it? I'm from the north, land of fog. Don't know what happened. Creature looked like a galt, told me I'd wake up at a strange place, which is obviously what already happened to us. Uh, and that I'd find someone in need of my help there. We were told to find someone who will help us. Uh, they made preparations in one of the tents there, and they can't offer us much at the moment, because the place is slightly different. That difference likely being the difference between different uh, versions of this town that exist in the different multiverses, or different stages of uh, leveling up. All right, Lost Soul, who are you? I don't remember and I don't know what I'm doing here or how I got here all I know is I'm supposed to be helping you with your quest all I know for now is that you need to find the rest of the people who are supposed to join us and help them out in their troubles I don't know maybe it will come back maybe there's something that could trigger my memories Mmm, new quest, all the lost souls. Makes a bunch of sense that we would be able to try and find something like that. Uh, here I have the option to rest to heal myself or healing mixture. This is effectively going to be like a home base to which I will return between individual kind of jaunts out into the public. So if, if I were to give like a, a vague structure uh, to this game, it would be that you start in an unupgraded town, you go out for uh, like a mini run, but it's more like an act one. And then you come back to the town, you rest, recuperate, you go back out, act two, rest, recuperate, go back out, act three, and then end game past that point. Uh, however, across runs, the upgrades to this town will persist. Yeah, I could have told you a little bit about the, uh, the barbarian rage there because I am actually playing a Wild Soul Barbarian at the moment. Uh, wild Magic Surging Barbarian, rather. Mm-hmm. Good. I caught you before you went out, all on your lonesome. Our mutual friend already told you to slay the stone golem. Perfect. The golem is just a, a start, though. Even if you do manage to kill it, the further you go, the more dangerous the road will become. And since we're talking roads, you're walking within the weirdness now, and it's dangerous. Take these candles, light them up, and try not to let this damned fog close around you. Got it? Oh, and before you face the golem, look around the area. There's a blacksmith nearby who might be willing to join your village. Finding people like him will be crucial for your survival. Each one will be helpful in a different way. And with that, I'm out. Good luck. I tended to think of this mechanic as kind of like a Digimon world mechanic, but I guess it is also like a rogue legacy mechanic of, of finding the kinds of people who will be able to assist you in upgrading certain materials and taking them back to base so they can do so in betwixt runs. Uh, so as you can see with the kind of like painterly oil situation that's going on on the screen, I am walking in the weirdness. I could turn the lights on, However, eh, eh. But a lot of the event dialogue will get super old once the main progression is done. Yeah, if I were to repeat, I would be skipping through a lot of these, definitely. Okay, so I just got a wild card, and because I was walking in the wild, it is quite bad. Yeah, I, if I play it, I will lose 25% armor for two turns. If not played, next turn I will lose 75% damage. So, you know, not grand. The enemy is also a faceless hunter here who will deliver more hits each turn until they are stunned. 
Uh, I can get a stack of vulnerability on the enemy. I'm going to set up a stack of vulnerability on the enemy. I'm not going to actually actively go for it just yet. Yeah, I think I'm fine with losing the 75% damage next turn. Then I'll broad reach, increase the damage of my next hit. Let's go with overhead swing, lowering the enemy's armor. One more overhead swing and then a block, I think. Taking five to six after that, but starting to stack the enemy up a little bit more. Yeah, so they're going to be dealing more and more damage. Negative 75% damage seems rough, though. It was only for that turn. Yeah, so weird cards are a little... <sighs> Weird. Look, literally, that's how it phrased itself in my head. Pun was not intended, but it was not avoided either. Uh, they're just a little strange in that the uh, the effect itself doesn't say lose 75% damage for one turn. It says on your next turn, lose 75% damage. So it it does imply it, but it implies it weirdly. I, I agree. I don't... I, I misunderstood that a few times and I played around it incorrectly. As a direct result. Yeah. Nice. So I think... I think why I'm getting Weird Stone as currency from this is because I'm fighting in the weird right now. I think that actually might be what's happening. Because I couldn't find Weird Stone for a while last time I tried to run. Okay. Pick a new card. Uh, three options are Preparation, increase damage by 10% until the end of combat, All In, this turn, increase the amount of damage you deal by 50%, or Calm Breeze, reduce the energy cost of three cards in hand by one. Hmm... Reduce the cost of three cards in hand by one. So, like, obviously that is energy uh, efficient, card inefficient. What, like, I draw a hand of five cards, I play a Calm Breeze, 75% of the cards remaining are reduced. Uh... <sighs> the thing is, it also locks in which of the cards I play. Largely, at least. Is there ever a reason not to take Calm Breeze with mostly one-cost cards? Uh, the fact that I'm quite likely to take something like a three-cost card if I see one, in which case playing Calm Breeze would just decrease the cost of a three-cost and I wouldn't be able to play it. Maybe you can get some draw with it. Would Calm Breeze last the whole battle, though? That's an excellent question. No. Reduce the energy cost of three cards in hand by one. Uh, I've seen a lot of energy cost reduction cards. And one of them actually defines how long the energy cost is reduced for. It says reduce the cost of the card uh, by one for this turn. And because that one says by one for this turn, and the rest of these don't say for this turn, I would assume that they would still persist, but they don't. They don't. I would like uh, a little more clarification on that one. Uh, or rather, I would just like it to be specified on the card. Uh, preparation. Increase damage by 10% until the end of combat. So I'm ramping up my vulnerability against the enemies, and I'm ramping up my own individual damage. Let's do it. We get to select a new passive skill whenever you hit an enemy. Reduce their armor by 2 until the end of combat. Also, well-maintained body, heal 25% of our missing HP at the end of a victorious combat. Or whenever you kill an enemy, draw a card and reduce its cost by one. I'm taking Armor Crusher here. How many cards do you draw per turn? Five by base. Um, so, I've taken Armor Crusher and I've taken a preparation, increasing our damage. So, one of the things that I would want, because our passive ability, our passive ability, our ultimate ability rather, is charged by dealing hits to the enemy. If I can get more cards that strike the enemy multiple times, I'm going to be vastly better off for it. 
this. There's a pack of enemies down there. They're guarding someone. Because we can see on the map that there is a person down there too. It's a mystery why these stones light up and banish the weirdness when people walk by. Many believe Merlin himself invented the runes carved into them. There's also a darker rumor that they were left by the Ford dwellers to lure humans into their domain like moths to the flame. So I've seldom found a good excuse to not just extinguish the milestone and take the weird candle like every time. I'll be looking for excuses not to, but I'm taking the weird candle. At least in this instance. Whew. All right. I think I actually will pop a weird candle here as well and move forward. So we have an enemy in the middle here who intends to attack everyone on the battlefield and buff, and then two other enemies, the infected humans, who will take a couple turns and then they will explode, leaving some grubs on the ground that I am not going to want to have to deal with. <sighs> How dare you, Abomination? How absolutely dare you? I don't have the ability to block this turn, so the only thing I can do to prevent that damage is stun the enemy. I really didn't want to have to do because I want them to attack their allies. This would attack their allies as well. Everyone on the battlefield. Okay. Preparation. Block. Let's go with a overhead swing over there. Ooh, small strikes followed it up perfectly. Can I kill you now? I can indeed. Is there a secondary benefit to not extinguishing the weird stone that it's not just telling you? I don't think so, no. Or... I don't know. Okay, the infected human is going to do its broad AoE here again. That's... That's unfortunate. That's okay. Uh-oh. Is it okay? Maybe it's not okay, though. I don't know if I ever took the time to consider whether or not it was possibly not okay. Uh, okay, fine. You die. I'll take my five to seven here. Broad reach and attack. Yeah, so from this battle, I didn't get any weird candles. So I'm going to turn the light back out or leave the light back out and then try and... Oh, sorry, a weird stone. This resource behind me. Um, so I'm going to try and let the light turn out and then take another fight and see if I can pick something up after that instead. We have double pain. Duplicate the next card played. Duplicate does exactly as you may expect. Plays the card again for zero energy. And we have last resort. Gain five blocks. Next turn, lose one energy. A block just negates single hits worth of damage. Um, I, I will advise, uh, I've done a lot of tutorial in the uh, the sponsored video, the sponsored video that I did for this game, which will be linked in the description down below should this make it to YouTube. Uh, random attack, deal one hit for 150 damage to a random enemy, stun a random enemy, and reduce a random enemy's armor by 50 this turn. Uh, I'm gonna be taking double pain here. I think that's that's pretty clear. This gives us the most ability to kind of, like, uh, break in terms of resources. Do blocks persist from turn to turn? They do not. No. Or they do not typically, the absolute least. Through. I have, not home. I have no home. I have no gold. I have no hope. Yeah, what do you do? Craft yeah, runestones and yeah, such? Beautiful. I'll take that cracked guy. I could use someone like you in the village. Perfect. We got him. So now we have some rune stones to equip. They have different effects should they be in the weapon slot or the uh, armor slot. 
I am going to be doing a lot of small instances of damage. So I think the weapon slot is where this one is going to want to go. And then the armor slot for the crack calc, giving us five health after every battle. I kind of actually want to wander around until the weird candle runs back out again. Your weird candle's burning out, better to use another one. So similar to like how Darkest Dungeon at the very start in the tutorials is telling you, turn the light back on, turn the light back on, turn the light back on. But then when you go, you know, deeper with the game, uh, it's correct to not turn the light on. <laughs> Next turn, lose 100 armor. So the fact that I have two blocks in this hand makes that harder to do. A lot harder to do, in fact. Hmm. All right. Definitely pop in preparation. That much is clear to me. So left hand side here is the deformed peasant. Become stronger every hit. It suffers. Right hand side, pitiful soul claimed by the soul harvester. This is the Soul Harvester. They drain the HP from allies, get stronger when they die, and replaces them with minions. So I need to get things like overhead swings, especially on this Soul Harvester. Try and reduce as much as I can off of you. Uh, I think I'll actually just double block. I'm going to take the risk that my armor doesn't hold up next turn. Move your camera. Yeah. I guess, I guess I'm going to be here. It's going to be a little awkward, but... So I don't really have like a... A whole ground on which I'm sitting right now. But I guess that's okay. There we go. I look like I'm sitting on top of the draw pile, I guess. Okay. So we actually managed to avoid the downside of the weird card. Because I'm going to just stun that, block that, and pass. Hmm. Need to keep working your armor off as best as we can. I should stun you as well. This is a rough fight, to be clear. This enemy is quite powerful. Maybe I shouldn't have taken them as early as I've uh, attempted here. Because I've got a lot of non-specific strikes, and that means I can't target specifically the Soul Harvester who needs the... the bopping. And spending my whole turn defending is not uh, sustainable. Hmm. Yeah. This is the turn I take damage. I can't have you buff everyone on the field. I have to block as well. Yes, this is the class that makes all enemies more vulnerable. It's the one that I have to play for the first run. Uh, and there are others. There are eight others in total. Right, I'm going to double pain on the small strikes. See, this is one thing I don't love. Uh, enemies that cannot be damaged can be hit with random targeting. All right. Yep, I'm gonna be taking a lot of damage. I'm okay with it. I'm at peace. Okay, then it is, so this is and the K. It's not gonna work, is it? 
So I'm gonna go for a stun instead. No, I'm just gonna heal, broad reach. I really wish I could have gotten the enemy vulnerable before doing that, but I do not think I had the time. <laughs> Next turn, lose two energy. Okay, this actually may be a, uh, a, a very quick death, which is strategic and was definitely intended. You see, uh, this is so that we can go and explore another character very early on. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's definitely what I did. Uh... Yeah, just swinging wide constantly there. All right, so now that I know that this enemy is way more business, we'll have that uh, as a quiver in our arrow for the future. Or the, in the opposite of that, rather. See, Rhapsody, maybe the risk-reward isn't worth it sometimes. It's so... I don't agree with that, though, because that's not what happened there. A different voice appears out of nowhere, it wasn't the weird card that killed me in that fight. It was the enemy. Be gone. It is calm. Inhumanly calm. Could I invite you to the table? You see a hooded figure waiting for you by the table. A chessboard sits upon it. The game in progress. As you take the free chair, you realize the creature has no face. A white skull leers from the shadows of the hood. A human skeleton draped with robes. I admit, I'm not used to showing up in person whenever people die. That's too much hassle with adjusting my presence to your current imaginations and whatnot. But let's say that your case is special. I'm dead? Your death? Yes. And yes to that other question. Yeah, too. of course. You're technically dead. But there are certain things that prevent you from, let's say, being properly gone. Recent events had consequences going beyond the intentions that sparked them. And now we're stuck in this unfortunate predicament because time, as you know it, is irreversibly corrupted. Time got corrupted? Sal says, uh, that's not entirely true. You had weird cards that, uh, if you had weird cards that gave you per uh, benefits, permanently reduce armor, draw cards to reduce your costs, stun enemies, you would have won that fight. Uh, you could have won that fight. I, I agree that I could have, but I don't think that it's a given, is the thing. Uh, Big Tentacle is off uh, said earlier, and I, I think this is actually correct as well, because those enemies are broadly, specifically the ones uh, protecting treasure chests, are broadly more powerful than the other enemies that are on the field, save the bosses. So that is kind of closer to like the elite equivalent for the game. So what I would have done, uh, would have ideally done rather, is just gone for a bunch of lower tier enemies first instead. Yeah, I, it's, it's the, the weird cards are good, but I am going to be over the course of the stream denying myself a lot of them and playing around the effects of having denied myself a lot of them. Time got corrupted? The past and the future are happening at the same time. All that you see is an echo of things that already happened or eventually will. Presented without inherent sense, without purpose, without any logic. You see four figures on the board changing shapes into forms of beasts, and a moment later, they dissolve into dust. You must slay the Guardians, and keep slaying them until you reach the source conjuring them out of the weirdness. Their deaths will make you stronger. This will lead you to your destination. Yep. I will say, 
This will give us the ability to play one of the other classes, though. So we don't have to play one of the ones that we were playing in the uh, the prior. Uh, fresh meat. And it's an attack. Uh, deals one hit for 120% damage for every non summon enemy killed with the card. Permanently increase your max HP by two. Uh, hold breath. Reduce the energy cost of one card in hand by one. Costs itself zero. And then power blow. Deal one hit for 750% damage. Draw two less cards next turn. Yeah, apparently the unlocks are random. I didn't think I'd uh, unlock that final one there. We've recruited two villagers. We have not found the final boss. Excuse me, the true boss fight. And not saved any souls from corruption. But we are going to be doing that over the course of this run. Do not yet you worry. Start over. 200 wealth seemed good to me. Oh, you are kidding me, right? <laughs> All right. I don't want to talk about it. I do not want to talk about it. <laughs> I could have sworn it was going to be there. It's okay. It's not going to be a problem. Do not yet you worry. Okay, so. Hot tip. Uh, I'm not going to run into any of the elite enemies off the bat here. I'm just going to farm my way through these chump nerds. I did think I could bypass the tutorial. The reason I thought that is because in the branch that I was playing before, the uh, the early access creator branch one, uh, if you lost a run, it would just unlock all of the classes for you. I found that after I had uh, after I'd recorded the video. All right. Overhead swing, uh, attack, uh, attack. Tainted force, 25 barrier on all enemies, all lose health. Oh no. But what if I just murdered the enemy instead? Yeah, it's seven weird stone there as well. Not spending a wealth art. I don't really have much to spend it on right now. Um, I could buy health potions. That's true. But if I find more people... Oh, wait, the blacksmith was there. Yeah, I could have bought runes. That's my bad. That's my bad. I should have bought runes from the blacksmith. Uh, Fists of Stone deal one hit for 300% damage and it reduces the enemy's armor by 25% until the end of combat. There's a double strike here as well. Deals two hits for 100% damage. Has a cleave keyword. Deals 20% damage to all other enemies. And then Chain Attack deals one hit for 100% damage and then duplicates the next card played. I do like duping things. Duping things is fun. But that's also not a huge amount of damage. Fist of Stone is good, yeah. 300% damage, like, that's already three times an individual attack. Obviously, it has the ability to reduce the enemy's armor. The thing is, like... So my ultimate ability wants me to hit the enemy as many times as possible, right? So that I can charge it up so that I... It, and it tends to be quite a large hit, right? And then my Hunter's Mark wants me to hit the enemy as many times as possible because it also then will charge itself up for that. Chain Attack does feel really clunky. I'm starting to think maybe I want to go for Double Strike, right? It's 200% damage. It's got the Cleave, which gives us some AoE. We have no AoE access yet. Um... But the big reason that I kind of want to go for the double strike is literally just for another hit on the enemy. I want to be able to charge those effects up. No candles sound super off. I don't intend to never use candles, but I just want to use them before opportune fights rather than before chump fights. Negative armor is a multiplier on top of the vulnerability multiplier. It stacks up fast. Yes, and I'm, I'm very comfortable with that being on there as well. Um, honestly, I don't think it would be entirely wrong to go for the Fist of Stone, but at the moment I'm going to try and keep up, uh, vulnerability on the enemy wherever possible. Uh, sorry, vulnerability. Uh, yeah, vulnerability. Duplicate every seventh attack type card played. Physical training is really good, uh, but Armor Crusher is Armor Crusher and Armor Crusher is where I'm going to want to go with this if I'm trying to put more, uh, multi-strikes into the deck. Okay. Uh... Is this enemy uh, chumpy? Yeah, that's just like a villager, dude. Mm. 
Not a villager, dude. Cool. <laughs> uh, warped light seeker. The enemy's power changes based on your weird candles burn level, uh, which is none. So what are you going to do, bud? Uh, let's give him a trip block for this turn. Oh, just a wee bit of hubris. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, now, this guy is going to be adding useless cards to the deck. The bounty hunter over there. And then we've got the uh, shaman that's going to be summoning a totem. Totem's going to be annoying to try and deal with. The candle does let you see the enemies better. That's true. So, I'm going to go for a double strike over there. It does its cleave. Everyone gets that vulnerable stack. Hmm. How dare you summon. It's 25% of our current HP on the next turn. Do I feel too bad about that? I don't know how bad I feel about that. take my kill on the summoner there. I know I'm treating health as a very, very expendable resource right now. Uh, I, I have been spending some time playing the Barbarian class in the game instead, where it is like, you optimally want to play below 25% max HP at all times. So part of that may be carrying over just a wee bit, maybe. I don't know. It's a good point. Well made, great side. The only health point that matters is the last. Yeah. Honestly, fight could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. Tint Force, lose 100 armor next turn. No problem with that. Get him. Hey. There's that weird stone. Okay. Uh, we have random attack. We've seen that prior. Advanced attack, deal one hit for 150% damage. Return three, can't stay in hand after it was played. Uh, it can be played a limited number of times in a single turn. Uh, and then down here we have double-edged. Retaliate with one hit, dealing 200% of your damage received from the next hit that an enemy does to you. I don't really want to do this one. Advanced attack isn't awful, but honestly, I'm leaning most towards skip right here. I'm gonna skip. I'm just gonna take a skip on that one. Uh, we've Early got a fountain explorers of health. of Avalon found many springs with supernatural properties, including ones that could heal. Not many of these miraculous creeks are left these days, since most were drained dry to provide water supplies for Arthur's soldiers. Mad, Mog, uh, Mad Mike Dog uh, says, skip is preemptive removal. Agreed. Uh, this is exactly why I wanted to skip there, right? Like, if I'm going to want a density of multi-attacks in the deck, then things that aren't multi-attacks are a little hard. Now, it is worth noting, this is a rogue light. So, next run, I may have already unlocked the character who will stay in the town by the time I start the next run, who will allow me to re-roll the cards that I see on, uh, on level up. So... These kinds of things, uh, the, 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 the first runs are harder than the later runs, right? Roguelite, right? Permanent progression existent. Drink the holy water. You immediately feel refreshed. 
However, you feel a strange chill running down your spine like an icy finger. It might not be safe to stay here any longer. Take a risk and drink some more or leave? Take a risk. You gotta take the risk. Okay. Uh, so we have one incoming attack. I should probably focus on the... On the shaman or the infected human first. Hmm... I want fewer attacking enemies on the field, so I take out the infected human first then. Okay, so there's two attacks that are attempted to come through to me. It's double block, overhead swing. This is now a very easy target. Double strike should set us up easily to kill it. And it does. I want to broad reach this double strike. Draw three less cards on the next turn. That's not too bad. Um, if I broad reach this double strike, it would be on the, the Shaman over on the left-hand side then. Instead. But I'm still taking damage. Do I need to take damage this turn at all? 10 to 15. No, I don't need to take any damage at all. 10 to 15. That'll kill you. Double block. The totems the shaman summons are crazy good. Thankfully, there were two people that were doing AoE attacks, or rather the abomination was doing an AoE attack, and the other one could have done an AoE attack, so we were in a unique position where it wasn't going to be too bad for us. But yeah, they can be pretty good. They certainly can be. Not enough strikes against the target that I needed. Oh well. Good lord! Arcus of Brambles, thank you very much for gifting 20 tier 1 subs to the community to uh, Lobomizer, Pause Deck 12, Drew 1 PKT, Spooky Skellies, Missing Gen, Uzrik Bir, uh, Mike Next, or sorry, Mick Next. <clears throat> Uh, Chimera Draco, Purple Otter, Andy, NDT2, Wiseman Slime, Hackwrench222, Seishin Bang, uh, Poseidon240, Pip uh, Piplop, PFG, uh, Josephka96, Stat is Tix, Peppermint Blondie, Waxbee, and Radaman. In Jerry Remotes and Channel, welcome to the public, y'all, as well as make sure to thank uh, Arcus of Brambles for the uh, the subs. Much appreciated, bud. That's <laughs> very kind of you. Uh, only one incoming attack from an enemy. Perfect. That's what we like to see. Actually, I didn't need to do that attack across. As long as I stun every turn, we've got the kill. Well, stunned. As long as I block once every single turn, we've got the kill easily. Um, yep. Overhead swing. Attack. Broad reach. Weird hunt. As the waters heal you again, the spring runs dry. Got 100 health. Back to full HP. So these are the things that I'm going to need to continually develop, right? Like in the previous run, I didn't know not to go for the treasure pile because the enemies defending it were elite enemies. Uh, and in this run, I didn't necessarily remember that if I went deeper on this event, I could get a full heal. So ultimately... Uh, Look at this map, right? We've obviously got all of these kinds of like points of interest across it. And the weird candle is going to be burning out as we try and traverse the map. So there is some sort of a, a, a traversal algorithm that I'm effectively just going to be running through here. One of my favorite things about Risk of Rain 1, specifically being a, a side-scrolling Risk of Rain 1, uh, was that a lot of it was just trying to figure out the, the most efficient traversal algorithm for getting across the map and like seeing all of locations where uh, value could be generated, so where chests and things like that may have spawned, uh, as well as boss areas, right? So the boss teleporter. Uh, and we're going to be doing kind of like traversal algorithms across this as well, right? By trying to also make sure that the points of interest that we want are hit at the right times. So that is to say, hitting lead enemies when I'm powerful, hitting health when I need it. 
Except that you don't use candles, so you can just wander as you want. I will use them eventually, just not necessarily just yet. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that is, uh, that's the, the, the dude that gets more damage unless you stun him. <laughs> okay, that's a powerful enemy to give me early, just saying, game. This is the Forest Sentinel. It redirects damage from all allies to itself. I think I will actually throw out the double strike here. Because, yeah, you take all of the hits from that. So you just took four strikes because you've redirected all damage from the Faceless Hunter. Uh, and then I can throw up a small block if I want. Small strikes is good. Actually, you're going to deal more and more damage every turn until you're stunned. I actually think I need to hasten this fight. Yeah, get that extra damage out there. And then I'm going to use my ability as well. Getting you your stack and stack of vulnerable. And then you should be easy to kill from here on out. Ten to force. Uh, 25 more two turns. Yeah, I'm fine losing my damage on the next turn. Not not too worried about that one. Uh, so we go overhead swing. Small strikes. Kills that target. Uh, I'll take an individual block against five to six. Yeah, individual block against five to six is fine for me. What if there's no pattern to elite normal fights? I'm pretty sure there is. Uh, based on the the uh, the target at the end of it. Okay. I do want to continue lowering your armor and making you vulnerable, but also I don't want to take that much damage to you. So now do I deploy two blocks? I think I do. We'll go back super aggressive on the next turn. Nice. We can actually stun the enemy. Uh, this is lethal. Small strikes, double strike. Ah, right. I I I do apologize. Uh, sorry. Sorry, we've got uh, some people com expressing concern that when the map is blurry, when we're on the main screen, it, it becomes a little difficult for people to look at. I, I do apologize about that. Um, let's get the damage increase from that one right now. Uh, yeah, I can, I can bring up the map in the middle when we're doing this. Or you can kind of do what I do and perceive it as kind of like a horror segment. He holds one Armed weapon wanderer. in his hand and has one weapon on his back. This strikes you as a bit excessive, unless he's a traveling weaponsmith. The blood covering his leather jerkin is not his own. It seems he can take care of himself. Before you get any stupid ideas, I used to be a master at arms at Halfway. Trained many young warriors there. If you've gold to spare, I could teach you a thing or two. Okay. I can learn a new skill, get one out of three advanced cards, or I can forget a skill and remove a card from the deck. Uh, there is no way to make it less blurry. Sorry, Chimera Draco. I've, I've been through all of the settings looking for, uh, looking for accessibility options. Uh, let's cut an attack. Because I've already added an attack type card and I'm likely to add another. So down here, what are you? Ooh, the person behind you is Futhark, I think is their name. Futhark? Futhark? Okay, so we can also identify this pack of enemies. Uh, that is a summoner, a healer, and one of the wandering peasants. So this shouldn't be too bad for us either. 